G'day guys, welcome to another True Footy YouTube video. In this video, I'll be doing something a little bit different to my usual weekly videos. I'll be taking you through my AFL power rankings after nine rounds. So the point of this list is a little bit different to a ladder prediction. I'll actually be ranking the teams one to 18 based on how likely I think it is that they can win the flag. How I've done it is that I've split the competition into six groups of teams, group A to group F. So in this video, I'll take you through what those groups look like. And at the end, I'll show you my full power rankings one to 18. So working from the bottom up, the first group I'm going to go through is Group F. This group contains the four teams that I think are the least threat to the Premiership and by extension, probably the most likely teams to make up the bottom four at the end of the year. These teams are Carlton, Gold Coast Suns, Sydney and North Melbourne. With just one win so far this year and two last year, it's hard to put anyone other than Carlton in last spot. I can't realistically see another team beating them to the wooden spoon. Now placing the Suns in this group might seem harsh on face value, but to be honest, I think the bottom teams are fairly strong this year. I don't quite think the Suns have the talent to sustain their early good form, and I expect over the course of the year, they'll probably slide back into bottom four calculation. With just two wins so far this year, North also fall into Group F for me. Them losing to the Swans on the weekend was a massive opportunity loss to regain some momentum. Speaking of the Swans, as I've mentioned, this is a real transitional year for them, and despite their win on the weekend, they're no real chance of finals, so they're the fourth team in Group F for me. Moving on to the next group, Group Group E, in which I've placed three teams, Melbourne, Fremantle, and St. Kilda. This is the group for which finals aren't impossible, but they're going to need to sort their shit out soon. All three teams have showed flashes of promise this year, but haven't got it quite together enough to actually get the result. Of this group, I think Melbourne are probably the best chance to make the finals purely based on their performance last year, and we know that when they're fit, they're good enough. That being said, they probably can't lose either of their next two games. Group D is comprised of the teams that I expect to be around the fringe of the top eight by the end of the season. This includes Hawthorne, Port Adelaide, Essendon, and the Western Bulldogs. All of these teams at times this year have looked like world beaters, but haven't really displayed the form consistently enough to be moved up into the next group. The power have probably shown the most finals potential this year, in my opinion, and at times have looked really dangerous, particularly with their big win in Perth this year. Unfortunately for them, bad injuries have taken the wind out of their sails big time. The Hawks are a side that I kind of want to write off constantly, because on paper, I just don't really see it. But every second week, I'm made to look like an idiot because they put out a really good performance. A good example is how they toweled up GWS last week and then this week lost to a depleted Richmond. Now, my inclusion of the Bulldogs in this group may surprise a few, but I, in recent weeks, they've really impressed me and they've really raised my expectations of them. A loss down in GMHBA hasn't really dented my confidence in that. I think it's a very tough place to play and they pushed along for about three quarters. Moving on to Group C and these are the teams that I am pretty confident will play finals this year. All three teams sit six and three, but we all know that there are no certainties in footy. The teams I'm talking about are Brisbane, Adelaide, and West Coast. After two bad games in their first three, the Crows have really snapped out of their funk and won four of their last five. Admittedly, their recent fixture hasn't been the most difficult, but they've probably shown more consistency than the teams in the group below them. The Lions at times have looked great this year, but have shown a few chinks in their armor with a couple of bad losses. Still, their midfield bats deep and their young talent combined with their easy fixture makes them very close to a finals lock for me. West Coast are probably the worst performed team out of the three in this group, but their premiership last year, plus their good win over the Pies at the G earlier this year, still gives them a little bit of currency. If not for their gutsy win over the Ds on Friday night, I probably would have had them in Group D, but we know that they now don't really have any trouble playing away games in Melbourne, so if they can bank enough wins throughout the year and then come good at the right time, there's still a slight chance. Now, Group B is where the actual real premiership contenders come into it for mine. I've got three teams in this group, Collingwood, Richmond, and GWS. The Pies are a star-studded lineup. They made the grand final last year and they've won seven of their first nine this year. So their spot in this group seems justified. Now the Giants have played stunning football this year and probably have as much star power as anyone in the league. That being said, they're still very unconvincing at the G and while I'm not discounting them, until they start winning at the G, I probably can't put them in that next echelon. If they continue to fail there, then you have to keep them in the outside betting for the Premiership. The Tigers for mine stay in this group because despite the injuries they've had, they've managed to get the results. Once the players they have out are back, I can definitely see them being contender and that's why they're in this group. In Group A, I only have one side, and that's Geelong. The reason for that is simple. In my view, they're a cut above the rest of the competition. Now, they're starting to become the side that many predicted they would be last year, and that was when Ablett was recruited to complete the Holy Trinity. And that happened before anyone had even factored in how good Tim Kelly could be. They've recruited really well with Gary Rowan coming in straight away and having a massive impact, and then they've got guys who were already on the list like Tom Stewart and Mitch Duncan quietly having career best seasons. Obviously, Pat Dangerfield remains a Brownlow chance. He's having that good a season. And then they've also added young guys 
like Brian Myers, Charlie Constable, and to a lesser extent, Jordan Clark, who can come in and play a role. Things can always change, but after nine rounds, I'm convinced Geelong are the team to beat so far. So just going back through the 18 teams, these are my power rankings. In Group A, on their own is Geelong. Next up, we have Collingwood, GWS, and Richmond rounding out the top four. Adelaide, Brisbane, and West Coast make up Group C, and Hawthorne is the first Group D team slotting into eighth spot there. Looking at the bottom 10, you've got Port Adelaide, Essendon, and the Bulldogs finishing off Group D. Melbourne, Fremantle, and St Kilda, the next layer down. And then finally, North Melbourne, Sydney, Gold Coast, and Carlton are my bottom four ranked teams. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments what you think of my power rankings and how they're different to yours. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing for our weekly content. And also, I'm hoping it's not too long before the boys and I can get together to do a True Footy podcast. Also, if you're this far into the video and you're still watching, I'd like you to leave a comment and tell me which team has surprised you the most so far in 2019. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you very soon on the True Footy YouTube channel. Thanks.